Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Beautiful worship set today. Beautiful worship set. We are glad you're with us today. Remember, Wednesday night is uh, Bishop Subi will be a good time in the Lord. If you can, bring a donation. If it's a check, just make it out to him. Uh, you can give online, but then we have to mail that to him. If you want him to get it immediately, cash or check, and we'll make it out directly to them. Um, we appreciate it. will be a good time in the Lord. begins at 7 Wednesday night. This week's one of those weeks where I've known for a week what I'm supposed to preach, but not known how to preach it. Uh, if you've ever been in my shoes and in a place of standing up here, you'll understand that. If not, maybe not so much. But um, turn with me, if you will, to John chapter 1. We're going to talk about words today. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. You have it, we'll stand for the reading of God's word. If you don't have it, it's on the screen. should be. <laughs> It's on that one, I'm assuming it's on the one behind me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Miss Wendy, will you bless the reading of the word? Father God, thank you for this opportunity to be in your house with our brothers and sisters as we worship you in spirit and truth, Holy Spirit, here in this house today. Father God, open our ears and our hearts to receive the word that you give to me, God. Father God, that it will change our lives, our line of thinking, our perceptions, and our hearts, Father God, so that we can be more like Amen. You can be seated. Uh, trying to look at things differently this year, trying to see them from a different angle. Uh, some things you can, some things you can't. But I'm looking at the Gospel of John, and the Gospel of John is different than the other three Gospels. It's written a little bit differently, and in six times in the Gospel of John, it says, John the beloved disciple of Christ, or John the beloved. He was a dear friend of Jesus. At the cross of Calvary, when he was on Calvary, he looked at his mom and he said, Woman, behold thy son, speaking of John. And he was said, John, behold thy mother. In other words, what Jesus was saying, John, I trust you to take care of my mom. I want you to take care of my mom. He's the only disciple that we know of that died of old age, not crucified. And if we go back to the word of God, we know the scripture says, Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the earth. And we know that John honored Jesus' mother, so you would think maybe possibly that's the reason he did that. But he says that John is the beloved, and John writes from a different angle than the other three gospel writers. And doing that, I look at him just a little differently, and here's how he starts his gospel. In the beginning was the Word. He didn't say in the beginning was Jesus. He didn't say in the beginning was Jesus. He said in the beginning was the Word. And the word that used there is logos. The word for word there is logos. There are other words for word in the New Testament, but logos is the word used there, and it was literally used for Jesus. And let me read you that first verse again. He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if you go down to verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I wonder in the Christian church today if the word is so valuable to us that we literally grab it and hang on to Jesus. Because John the Beloved said that Jesus was the word. And I think about it when we watched the movie the other night, when we watched the movie of Martin Luther, when people said, I will die before they'll take my Bible from me. 
I will lay down and let them chop my head off before I will allow them to take my Bible. It meant that much to them because the word was alive and it was living and it was the Christ to them. John understood that. A Greek philosopher named uh, Heraclitus, if I'm saying it correctly, first used the term logos around 600 B.C. before Christ to designate the divine reason or plan which coordinates a changing universe. How fitting is that for Christ? That things are changing under Christ. We're no longer under the Old Testament law. Things are changing. And he uses the word logos. If we go back to the Old Testament and we look at word, or the words, if you will, the scripture says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke our world into existence. He used words to speak our our world that we live in into existence. The terra or the earth that we literally are walking on is here because he spoke it into existence. Do we understand how powerful our words are? Do we understand and comprehend that our words, John said Jesus is the word or word. Do we understand how powerful our words are. Proverbs 18.21, if you want to write these down, I'm going to use a bunch of scripture. Proverbs 18.21, they're not going to be on the screen because I didn't give them all to the guys. But it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now as Pentecostals, here's what we like to do. We like to proclaim that healing and rebuke the enemy, and we like to do those things. But if we look at this from just a little bit different angle, life and death is in the power of our words that we speak. How many people in this room have been damaged by words? Be honest, if that's you. Yesterday was the anniversary of losing... Wendy's grandparents, they both were killed in a car wreck same day 10 years ago, day after Valentine's Day, after 63 years of marriage. And, and we were thinking and we were meditating on that yesterday, and I began to think about things they had said to me in the, the, the few short years that I knew them. And I began to meditate on things that I'd said to my mom and dad and things that my mom and dad had said to me, words that are vivid in my mind, words that I wish I could take back. Because I damaged with those words. Words that damaged me over the years. How powerful are the words of our mouth and how do we use those words? Not just in a Pentecostal setting where we rebuke the enemy or cast out devils. But in everyday life, how powerful are the words of our mouth and how do we use those? Proverbs has a lot to say about what we say. In fact... The subject of the tongue or the mouth or the lips is used over 150 times in Proverbs alone. It's a central issue of the book of Proverbs. Listen to what James says, which is a book of Proverbs. We don't like that, but truth. Though the tongue is small, it is set on fire of hell. With the same tongue, we bless the Lord and curse our friends. When I got here, there was one guy, I love him dearly, and he meant nothing by it, but you know what he did? He called his wife Heifer. Hey, Heifer, come here a minute. Hey, Heifer. He said it in a joking manner, but how much damage can be done by calling your wife a Heifer? <coughs> how much damage can be done with our words? Life and death is in the power of our tongue. Do you know there are men and women that commit suicide every day because of words spoken to them? Because they can never recover. Do you know that there are some of us that, that are literally, that we struggle every day of our life. I still struggle. My Brother Mark, you could probably relate to this from words spoken to me from the first church I ever pastored. I've been here over seven years and I've never signed a check. And the church of God requires me to be on the checkbook, and I refuse because of words spoken to me in my first church. Not a
me, but about pastors. And it said, the statement was, well, pastors always have control of the checkbook and they always take the church's money. I haven't been on a checkbook in 15 years. I refuse. Why? Because of words spoken. How many of us today struggle with things in our life because of words spoken? How much power is in those words? James says it sets on fire of hell. Words are important. After all, God created the universe with words. He spoke and it was so, so loud. Jesus, our Lord Jesus was called the Word. How many of you ever heard of Tom Clancy, the writer? You ever heard of Jack Ryan, the Jack Ryan series, or the, uh, the, the Hunt for Red October, the Patriot Games? Anybody ever heard of those movies or those books? Tom Clancy writes novels, and they're big novels. You can knock somebody out with them. Let me give you some thoughts. According to research, every person here in this room today will open his mouth on average 700 times a day. It hit me more than that because I'm up here, right? In those 700 times, you use an average of 18,000 words. Those 18,000 words would translate to about 54 printed pages a day. That means in one year, the average person will fill 66 books bigger than Tom Clancy novels. You will write 66 books this year. Incidentally, the same number that's in the Bible with the words you speak that are over 800 pages long with your words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. By your words, Jesus writes, by your words you will be condemned and by your words you will be justified. Proverbs 10, 31 says, The mouth of the righteous bringeth forth wisdom. Proverbs 15, 7 says, The lips of the wise spread knowledge. What should come out of a righteous man or a righteous woman? Wisdom and knowledge. Think about this in our daily walk. Every time I join in with the dirty joke crowd, I'm actually writing a book. I'm actually writing a book. Every time I share Jesus with someone, I'm writing a book. I'm writing with my words. Do you know the words have the power to create? Now, I know these are things that we don't like to hear, but our children sometimes, we can damage them. And believe me, they can damage us. But what I have to understand as a born-again child of God is, my words can heal or damage. How I retaliate with my words will make a difference in people's lives. It's crazy, isn't it? The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, Proverbs 15.4. I have a son in Tennessee that says things I wish he wouldn't say. We had one of those discussions yesterday. But how I respond is going to make the difference. And it, because I can put him down and I can bash him for what he's doing and what he's saying. But at the end of the day, am I destroying or am I building? Proverbs 15, 4 says, The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you. I thought I was all alone in here. <laughs> a man finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word. Proverbs 15, 23. We got a call this week that said our church was being bashed on social media. How do we respond to that, Pastor? We don't. Well, you got a rebuke. Let me just go on. Let me just go on. Words can be used to heal. Words can be used to create. If you don't believe that, listen to some uh, Napoleon Hill. 
or some Stephen Covey, some people that, that train salespeople and they tell themselves how, how successful they are. They get up every day and they tell themselves what's going on because the reality is this. I was created in the image of Almighty God. The enemy in the world would tell me I'm a nobody, I'm no good, I'm useless. But God's word, if I take God's word in fact, John says the word and I apply it to my life and I begin to live and believe what God said I am instead of what the world says I am instead of what the enemy says I am they're always going to pick on you they're always going to pick on me but it will be my words that will determine is this all right? Amen. words can be used for wise counsel counsel Proverbs 10, 31, the lips of the wise spread knowledge. Proverbs 17, 10, words can be used for rebuke. But can I say this to you? Let me just give you an example. Words can be used for rebuke. Proverbs 17, 10, a rebuke impresses a man of discernment. More than a hundred lashes a fool. I preached on holiness at my first church for way too long. Boy, and I got up and hammered them. And a man walked up to me and said, I'm done with God. And I said, what do you mean you're done with God? And he said, I could never live up to the standard you've presented to me. There is nothing in me that would ever be that good. I give up on God. And he walked away. Those were my words, using God's words against people. We have to be cautious in how we do things. You're supposed to, you are supposed to rebuke. You are supposed to do that, but do it and make sure it's a warning. Make sure that it is that it comes from God. Make sure the things that we do are honoring God. It literally says, uh, a rebuke impresses a man of discernment more than a hundred lashes a fool. Do you know why I don't post all that stuff on social media that some do about politics and all that? You know why? Because you're not arguing with people who are, have discernment of what's going on in their lives. Their, their view of what's going on is so skewed. You're not going to change that. All you're doing is arguing a fool's argument along the way to try and defeat something that is not. The, all you're doing is driving them farther away from what you're doing. It doesn't work. And God said so. He said that a hundred lashes of a fool makes no difference. Words can be used to encourage. An anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. Can I just say this to you? In you is life and death. You have the power of life and death in your mouth today. It's a huge power. It's an anointing used by God to literally create the earth. It is a power that resides inside of you because the Word lives inside of us. And when the Word lives inside of me, I represent Him in what I say and do. And while I, my job is to rebuke, while my, jo my job is also to encourage. My job is to let you know that you can come out of the mess that you're in. My job is to let you know that God is waiting and He says, He set His feet upon a rock and He established my going. He literally says, I will pull you up out of the miry clay. I know you're in a mess. I know there's stuff going on in your life, but be of good cheer. God isn't done yet. A pet peeve of mine is, and I got to hurry, I know, is, is on special days, boy, we love to post things. The love of my life for 47 years. You know what? The only time I ever heard you say that was on Valentine's Day. I never heard you say another word, the 364. If they're the love of your life, you ought to say something the other 364 days about how good they really are. Because the you're posting memes the rest of the year about how evil women are, folks. Come on. Or how evil men are. Come on, be real. We laughing at those commercials that say a man's not smart enough to get in a refrigerator and get a cup of yogurt out by himself. A woman's got to do it. If you're not smart enough to get a cup of yogurt out, starve to death and die. 
Come on, we smarter than that. Every man and woman in this room is writing a book with your words every single day. And if we don't learn to speak life, and if we don't learn, and you say, well, Jesus kicked them out of the temple and threw tables over. He rebuked a religious crowd, not a lost and dying world. Amen. Think about your words. Think about what you say. People ask me what's wrong with me now because I'm learning to sit in my own home and keep my mouth shut. Because most of the time when I open it, I'm upset about something and I should have kept it shut in the first place. Come on, Tim, say amen back there. You know, you know I'm speaking truth. <laughs> Words can be an encouragement. Words can be used to witness. The lips of a righteous nourish many. Lips of the righteous nourish many. Words can flatter. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Words can be used to argue. Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. That's Proverbs 29, 11, if anybody wants to write that one down. That's one I got to learn to remember right there that uh, I'm not a very nice thing when I open my mouth when I shouldn't. A fool gives full vent to his anger. I might be, but I got my two cents worth in. It wasn't worth two cents. <laughs> There's no gold back in those pennies. No silver certificate anywhere, guys. You know, I, for you young folks, the older ones will explain that to you. Words can be used to argue. Can I just say this to you? If someone comes to you with half of a scripture, and it's the only half of a scripture they know in their life, and they're going to scream and yell and rant and rave at you that once saved, always saved, or this or that, and that there's no way anybody... You can scream till you're blue in the face, and all you've done is turn blue in the face. You've got to learn to speak with love. We've got to learn to speak that, you know what, build people up, draw them in, not drive them away. Words can be gossip. A perverse man stirs up dissension, and a gossip separates close friends. Proverbs 16, 28. Words can be used to lie. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. Proverbs 14, 25. The rumor is that the pastor that took his own life this week was a member of Word of Faith type movement. Now, I love Word of Faith. I love it. I love it. But if you've been taught and you teach your whole life that God wants everybody rich and you flat broke, you could get depressed real easy. You could get discouraged real easy because what you're preaching ain't working for you. Because what you're preaching, let's be honest, if it's not in context with God's word, is not correct, right, and true. Words can be used to lie. If I take scripture out of context, I can say, Judas hang himself, go ye and do likewise. Amen, right? I read you straight out of God's Word. I just took two parts of two verses, added them together, and built something. Words can be used too much. Proverbs 17, 27. A man of knowledge uses words with restraint. I'm 53 years old, and I'm just now learning that verse of Scripture. Can I give you another uh, example of that? One of my favorite evangelists, and I won't tell you his name, but he's one of my favorites. Absolutely one of my favorites. Come to my church in, in Suck Creek, Tennessee and preach the revival. One man gave him a $2,500 love offering. The man could preach. The boy was amazing. But the last night he got so wound up and so fired up and a woman had been praying for healing for like 14 years. 
And he looks her in the face. He says, in the name of Jesus, you'll be healed in 24 hours, never to have the problem again. Three weeks later, she's in the hospital having surgery for the problem. We have to be careful what we say. Our words can either heal or destroy. If God didn't tell you to say it, don't get wound up and say it. If God told you to say it, don't sit back. But if God told you to tell me I'm going to be healed, he'll confirm that. And if he confirms that, I'm expected to be healed. I'm praying in agreement with you that you're going to get a good report from the doctor. Believe him with you. But I know the God that's on the throne no matter what the report is. James 1.9 says, Let every person be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We live in a world that is filled with hurt and pain. Politicians will say anything to get a vote. Sometimes preachers will say anything to keep the money coming through the doors. Sometimes we get hurt because we got a chip on our shoulder and we're looking for somebody to hurt us. We've got to understand. Now, I know a Pentecostal message about words would be uh, praying a new bridge from here to Hawaii so you don't have to fly, right? Uh, that, that's, that's my new prayer, right? Because I don't want to fly. So I'm to... And I believe in Pentecostal power. But if I can't control my own words, why would God loose me with great power to heal the sick cast out demons if I can't even talk to my brother without offending him with everything I say. Every day of your life, on average, you will open your mouth 700 times. And you will write a book. In fact, in a year's time, 66 books. I got 51 years of that, I didn't really start talking until I was about two. That's probably not true. I'm probably talking from day one. <laughs> but let me say this. We live in a world that is filled with hurt and pain. And if I don't know the author of the word, I won't know what to say in response. My words will hurt and tear down rather than to build up. Now, I've just quoted scripture to you. That's all I've done today. Give you scripture after scripture after scripture. But I would say this to you. If your vision doesn't consist of growing in this word, the word, you need to grow your vision. Because while I don't have the answer for everybody, God knows I don't. Mark, don't you wish we did? Don't you wish we had as pastors and counselors and, and we sit with people and people don't want to hear, well, let me pray about that because I don't know what to say to you. Because what I would like to say from my flesh will probably not be what the Holy Spirit would have me say to you. You have the word inside of you that will heal the world. Amen. And I look back at the times I've damaged people. And maybe why this week has been so hard is because God's been tearing me up. When I have to tell someone, no, we just can't give you the money. The church just doesn't have it to give you in benevolence right now, this week. And then I get shredded and told how awful I am and how horrible this church is. And I have to respond in godly love. We have the word that brings salvation and deliverance. 
We have the word bring comfort in times of deep devastation. We have the power of life and death in our tongues. Think about this before you speak. Using one verse, most likely out of context. He says, today I set before you life and death. Choose life. Today I could stand in this pulpit and cut you down or lift you up. Life and death. Out of your mouth comes blessings and curses. Be wise. Be loving. If you must confront, confront in love. If you must rebuke, rebuke in love. But use words that help heal and not destroy. Use words that God has given you. This beautiful thing called Jesus. And what we believe to be the closest disciple to him in the entire canon of scripture begins his writing with, he's the word. He's the word. I look at our failing world around us. And I'm thinking, God, you gave me the answer. What am I doing with the answer you gave me? Am I just getting my two cents worth in? Or am I making a difference? People don't need to see me just lay hands on the sick and then recover. Or to cast out demons. They need to see me walk in what Christ would have me walk in. With the 66 books a year that I write with my words. Over 800 page books. Every answer you need. While it doesn't feel that way sometimes. Every answer you need is in the word. Well, it doesn't always feel that way. It's there. Father, I come to you right now. Lord, I know the last few weeks has not been Pentecostal fire. But I also know that when I look at your word, I watched your son Jesus sit down and teach. And grow a movement of Christianity that till this day has not been silenced. And Father, I pray that my word will always build up and lift up your people. Not give them cushy soft out there somewhere that's not even real. But that the words of my mouth would build a generation that would withstand times. And I pray for those that have been hurt by my words that they would forgive me. And that they would be able to let go of the mistakes and things I've said or in the way that I've said them that I shouldn't have. So God, I'm praying one of those dangerous prayers today. Help me guide my tongue, my mouth and my lips to be the mouthpiece of Almighty God that you've called me to be. Lord, if there's one here that needs healing for anything today, I pray that as we pray over them, we'll be able to touch the need in their life. I'm praying that your sweet Holy Spirit would minister to them with the words that are absolutely needed in your precious and holy name. Stand with me, if you will. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day you can do that.